Hello guys, this is Sir Mars and you are watching Lectures ni Sir Mars. So, sa video na ito, I will be discussing about the introduction to structural engineering. So, this is a under the subject na structural theory. So, kung hindi ka pa nakasubscribe sa aking channel, please subscribe guys and uh, hit the notification bell para updated ka sa ating mga bagong lectures. So, para maintindihan natin guys yung ating subject na structural theory, kailangan alam muna natin yung definition ng structure. So, ano ba yung structure? A structure refers to a system of connected parts used to support a load. So again, ulitin lamang natin guys, no? So yung structure is a system of connected parts which is used to support a load. So kung merong mga parts, tapos pinag-connect-connect natin, tapos nakabuo siya ng isang structure or isang istruktura, and yung structure na yun is used to support a load, then that is the general definition of a structure. So, a perfect example, of course, that we know is a building. So, yung building is mga pinag-connect-connect na parts, and nakabuo siya ng isang system, and it is used to support a load or loads. Okay? So, another example of a structure is a bridge. Of course, these are common civil engineering structures. Tapos, another example is, of course, a tower, obviously. Then, we also have a ship. Yes, hindi kayo nagkakamali yung ship or yung barko or bangka or whatever it is na ginagamit natin sa sea transportation or ocean transportation ay masasabi nating structure because these are system of connected parts and they are used to support a load. Also, yung aircraft is also a structure. So, basically, lahat ng mga nakikita natin sa paligid are all called structures. Even those simple things such as the chair and the table. No, bakit masabi nating structure itong chair at table? Because these are system of connected parts and they are used to support a load. So, for example, nga, diba, yung chair, kung gumamit ka lang ng mga kawayan or kahoy and then minartilyo mo, nakagawa ka ng upuan and then inupuan mo siya, ikaw na yung load ng chair na yun. So, yung chair ay isang system of connected parts and kung inupuan mo siya, then you will be the load on that chair. So, therefore, the chair is a structure. Ganun din naman yung table, di ba? So, syempre, kapag kaginamit na natin yung table, nilagyan natin ng mga pinggan or mga papel sa office, di ba? So, yung mga pinggan na yun or papel, no, these are the loads sa, sa table. So, these are systems. So, this, the table is a system of connected parts and it is used to support a load. So, it is a structure. So, ayun. So, I think klaro na sa atin, guys, kung ano yung definition ng structure. Okay? So, when designing a structure to serve a specified function for, for public use, the engineer must account for its safety, aesthetics, and serviceability while taking into consideration economic and environmental constraints. So, ayun kasi nga, yung trabaho ng isang engineer or civil engineer no, is to design a structure. So, ayun. So, kapag ka nag-design tayo ng isang structure, ang dami natin kailangan i-consider. Una, yung pinakamahalaga is yung safety. So, pag sinabi natin safety, dapat safe yung ating structure na, na dinidesign. In other words, pag sinabi natin safe, it means na kapag ka nilagyan na siya ng load, hindi siya bibigay. In other words, hindi siya dapat mag-fail or mag-collapse kapag ka meron na siyang load. That is safe. Safety. Aesthetics. Yung aesthetics is actually hindi naman talaga siya pang civil engineering na as in super pang civil engineering. Pero, syempre, kailangan din natin yun i-consider when, when we are designing a structure, di ba? So, yung, pag sinabi natin aesthetics, ito yung panlabas na kaanyuan ng structure. Ito yung um, physical na ganda ng ating structure. Syempre, dapat pleasing to the eyes yung ating dinidesign. Next is serviceability. So, pag sinabi natin serviceable ang isang structure, it means na dapat magagamit siya sa kanyang intended na purpose. Kung nag-design ka ng isang upuan, dapat magamit siya as upuan. Kung nag-design ka ng isang table, dapat magamit siya as table. 
diba? So that is serviceable. Ser serviceable. So um, actually, medyo malalim pa yung definition ng serviceability dito because uh, pag sinabi natin serviceable, no, may kinalaman din to sa mga such, sa mga deflections, sa mga vibrations. Ayun, so in the future pag-uusapan din natin yung mga ganyan. So dapat i-consider din natin guys yung economic, no? Economical dapat siya. Ibig sabihin, siya dapat ay sulit, mura, no? Pinakamura pero dapat safe and serviceable and aesthetically pleasing. Okay? So, ayun. And dapat kinakonsider din natin guys yung environmental constraints. Ayun. So, sa ating pag design ng, is ng isang is structure. Let us now define what a structural engineering is. Klaruhin ko lamang guys, no? Yung ating subject is a structural theory. So, you are here to learn structural theory. And take note na yung structural theory kasama na yung mga subjects kung civil engineering yung tinitake mo ngayon and you are taking structural theory so uh, it means natapos ka na ng statics of rigid bodies, dynamics of rigid bodies, strength of materials so yung mga yan, kasama na din yung uh, reinforced concrete design at saka steel design na itetake mo pa in the future, kasama na din yung structural theory are all under a single na umbrella and that is called structural engineering. So yung structural engineering is the science and art of planning, designing, and constructing safe and economical structures that will serve their intended purposes. So again, ulitin lamang natin guys, no? So, yung pag-design and pag-construct ng mga economical structures na safe and serviceable are all under a single umbrella which is the structural engineering. So let us let me now give you a simple historical background ng structural engineering. Okay. So earlier engineering structures were designed by trial and error and by using the rules of thumb based on past experiences. So ano ba yung ibig sabihin nun guys? No? So syempre uh, bago pa na imbento yung kursong civil engineering, meron na tayong mga structures in the past. So, actually, kahit pa nga nung bago pa ipinanganak si Jesus Christ, di ba? Meron na tayong mga nagalakihang structures na nag exist before. Ayun. So, ano ba yung ginagamit ng mga tao? Bakit sila nakakapag-construct ng ganon kalalaking structures? Paano sila nakapag-construct ng mga bahay nila, ng mga buildings, no? Kung wala pang civil engineering that time. So, of course, gumamit sila ng trial and error. Ang ibig sabihin, no, nag-try and try lamang sila ng mga different na mga materials, different methods, different techniques, no, hanggang sa malaman nila kung alin yung mga effective na materials, alin yung mga effective na mga techniques, no, and using the rules of thumb. So, yun na nga guys, no, dahil nga, no, sa trial and error, nakakreate sila ng rules of thumb so because of those experiences and i think that these rules of thumbs are really effective no sometimes because may mga existing pa naman ng mga structures na nag-exist hanggang ngayon mula pa dati di ba so katulad na lamang nung egyptian pyramid so yung egyptian pyramid was constructed about 3000 bc and they are existing until now no and pati na din yung Greek temples which were constructed between 500 to 200 BC okay pati na din yung mga yung Roman Colosseum which was constructed on in 69 to 82 AD and meron pa tayo mga iba pang structures such as the Roman aqueducts which was constructed in 312 to 226 AD so 312 BC hanggang 226 AD then, meron din tayo yung mga Gothic cathedrals which are existing until now, uh, 1000 to 1580. Yung mga structures na nabanggit natin guys, no, ay na-construct sila matagal na matagal na panahon na ang nakakaraan. And take note, wala pang formal computation kung paano mag-design, wala pang formal computation kung paano mag-analyze. No? So, kasi nagsimula lamang talaga yung meron na tayong mga computations Dahil kay Galileo Galilei. So, si Galileo Galilei is considered to be the originator of the theory of structures. So, bakit natin sinabi na si Galileo Galilei yung originator ng theory of structures? It is because noong 1638, no, naglabas siya ng libro which is entitled Two New Sciences. It is in Italian na book, no? And uh, bali guys, no, dinis niya dito yung mga bagong sciences and uh, 
dito na nga nagsimula yung structural engineering. Nag, noong, noong 1730, nagkaroon ito ng in- English translation and yun na nga, ito na nga yung title, ito yung um, translation nung kanyang book noong 1638. So, the title is The Mathematical Discourses Concerning Two New Sciences Relating to Mechanics and Local Motion. So, actually, dito, present nga yung dalawang bagong sciences which are the what we call now the strength of materials and the kinematics so of course yung strength of materials kakatake nyo pa lang yan uh, probably last sem and yung kinematics is under sa dynamics of rigid bodies i know na alam nyo yan so following galileo's pioneering work the knowledge of structural mechanics advanced at a rapid pace in the second half of the 17th century and into the 18th century. So, ito yung mga notable notable investigators, no? So, una si Robert Hooke after kay Galileo, no? Na, 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 napansin din si na Robert Hooke. So, si Robert Hooke, he developed the law of linear relationships between the force and deformation of materials which is what we call the Hooke's Law. So, diniscuss nyo to noong strength of materials. Si Sir Isaac Newton, of course, alam na alam natin to, siya yung nag-formulate ng laws of motion and he, he also developed calculus. So, alam nyo, yung laws of motion ni Isaac Newton, ito yung parang basis ng knowledge ng buong civil engineering. No? I hope na, I hope na na-realize nyo yan, guys, no? Uh, mula pa nung physics, no? Parang yung, parang siya talaga yung uh, pinaka-core ng buong knowledge ng civil engineering, yung loss of motion ni Isaac Newton. Then, of course, we have John Bernoulli. So, si John Bernoulli, siya yung nag-formulate ng principles of virtual work na gamit na gamit sa pag-compute ng mga deflections and slope, no? at different points of the beam, a uh, truss or a frame. Then meron tayo, meron din si Leonard Euler. Okay, he developed the theory of buckling of columns. So ito actually, no, mas makikilala niyo pa si Euler pagdating niyo ng design, ng steel design at saka ng reinforced concrete design. Then si De Coulomb, he presented the analysis of bending of elastic beams. Okay. Then we also have Navier. He published a treatise on elastic behavior of structures. This is the first textbook on the modern theory of strength of materials. The development of structural mechanics continued at a tremendous pace throughout the rest of the 19th century and into the first half of the 20th when most of the classical methods for the analysis of structures were developed. Yung mga notable contributors ay sina Clapeyron. He formulated the three-moment equation for the analysis of continuous beams. So, ito yung pinakamaburito kong method for analysis ng mga indeterminate and determinate beams. No? And si Maxwell, he presented the method of consistent deformations and the law of reciprocal deflections. No? Later on, in the later part of uh, structural theory, no, I discuss natin din yung method of consistent deformation ni Maxwell. Next, I see Otto Moore. He developed the conjugate beam method for calculation of deflections and more circle of stress and strain. So, I discuss din natin yung conjugate beam and yung more circle of stress and strain. So, next, I see Castellano, Alberto Castellano. He formulated the theorem of least work or yung Castellano's theorem. Then, si Green, he developed the moment area method and very useful yung moment area method. Si H. Mueller Brislow, he presented a principle of constructing influence lines. Pag-uusapan din natin yan. Si Mani, he developed the slope deflection method. It is considered to be the precursor of the matrix st- stiffness method. Then we have Hardy Cross. He developed the moment distribution method noong 1924. Alam nyo ba no? Noong time na nadevelop ni Hardy Cross yung moment distribution method, no naging super sikat ito. It was widely used by structural engineers during the period from about 1930 to 1970. It contributed significantly to their understanding of the behavior of the statically indeterminate frames, no? So kung malilearn nyo yung moment distribution method, sobrang dali lamang nitong method na to guys. No, actually, 
kapag ka naiintindihan mo talaga siya, you can make a, an Excel gamit yung Microsoft Excel. No? You can make a program para mas madali nyo makompute yung mga moments and reactions at supports gamit yung moment distribution method. So, many structures designed during that period such as the high-rise buildings would not have been possible without the availability of the moment distribution method. The availability of computers in the 1950s revolutionized structural analysis because the computer could solve large systems of simultaneous equations, analysis that took days and sometimes weeks in the pre-computer era could now be performed in seconds. So, ayun, nung nagkaroon na nga guys ng mga computers, no, ay, ito na yung laging modern way of solving, of, anal of analyzing and designing ng mga structures. So, napakabilis ng computer compared sa mano-manong computation. No? Pero, of course, we are going to learn the manual computation before we dive into the computer analysis or computer design. Okay? So, that's it. So, if you have questions, guys, no, please ask sa comment section, no? So, again, this is the introduction to structural engineering. So, see you in the next video. If this lecture has helped you, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, you can comment below or send your questions to my Facebook page, Lectures Knees from Mars. I will paste the link in the video description. You can also download the PDF of my lectures and PDF references for civil engineering by visiting my site. The link is also in the video description. Thank you again, guys. Once again, this is Sir Mars, and see you in the next lecture.